channel open, welcome back to Weekly Trek, a proud member of the Tricorder Transmissions podcast network. I am your host, Alex Perry. What's today's date? The date. Today's show was recorded on January 18th, 2019, and is current through the amazing Star Trek Discovery Season 2 premiere, Brother, so beware of spoilers. All right, let's get into the show. Good day, Voyager, and welcome to A Briefing with Neelix. It's a catchy title, isn't it? Weekly Trek is a 30-minute news show covering the biggest stories from the Star Trek franchise. We're in a new golden age of Star Trek, not seen since the late 1990s. There are four television shows in active production. Notice that's one more than there was a week ago. Rumors of more on the way, and enough merchandise to fill the Bajoran wormhole. So stick with me, and I will help you sort the real facts from the Dominion propaganda that you'll find everywhere online. But, as always, I can't do this alone, and my guest this week is Ali Martinez, who you may know better as the 23-year-old Trekkie. Ali, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm super pumped to talk about all the Trek news that happened this last week. You know, it's funny, I, uh, my first week was a big week for news, and my second week is turning out to also have been a huge week for news, not to mention the <laughs> premiere of Star Trek Discovery Season 2. Mm-hmm. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, we're gonna whoop. have lots of fun stuff to talk about. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, Ali, as you may have heard with Jim last week, and as I plan to ask my guests every week, I would like to know something that's got you excited about Star Trek at the moment. It could be anything, an episode, a book, a comic, merchandise, what's got you moving at Warp 10? Okay, this is actually a story, but first of all, I'm obviously very excited about the new season of Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> it feels great to have Star Trek back on television, but Hell my yeah. feel good st- <laughs> But my feel good Star Trek moment this week is I interacted with someone on Twitter this week that had tweeted that she was really excited for Star Trek Discovery because it's the first Star Trek that she actually gets to watch, and that just kind of blew my mind because That's so exciting for her, and that's what Enterprise was for me. I was so excited to actually sit down and watch it with my family each week. So props to her that she's excited, and I feel like we all kind of had that exciting moment where we were interested in seeing the Star Trek, sitting down every week and watching it, and just having that excitement of not knowing what comes next instead of binging it all. That is amazing. (laughs) The fact that this is somebody's first live Star Trek television show is fabulous. Yeah, mine was uh, Voyager. Um, that was the first one that I watched. Amazing, amazing show. And But it still, t- it still tingles me every week having a new Star Trek on TV. And I can only imagine if that was somebody's first. Uh, that's a great one. I was just going to go with uh, the premiere of season two. I mean, what a fabulous episode we had yesterday uh, with Brother. What did, you, what did you think about the Star Trek Discovery season two premiere? I actually really liked it. I had a few people over to watch with me that actually were not Star Trek fans, but decided that they would come and watch it. And it was funny, they had so many questions for me, and they were like, oh, I'm sorry that I'm interrupting you to ask questions. And I'm like, no, ask questions. I want you to get interested in Star Trek. But I thought it was wonderful. It just, like, kept me on my toes the entire time, and just the action was great, the comedy was great. I just, I loved it. Yeah, wasn't it great? I was on, I thought the the vibe of it was really good. Anson Mount was fabulous as Captain Pike. And overall, I think, we, you know, it set up a really interesting story for what the rest of season two will be. So I'm, if, this is, if this is the way things are starting and if they carry on like this, I think we're going to be in for a really, really great season of Star Trek. I agree. It was a super strong start and it makes me even more excited to see what comes next. Yes. All right. Let's turn to the week's top stories. There's a war going on. And I'm a reporter. Okay, so another packed week of news, um, but we'll begin with the biggest news of the week, uh, which was the announcement that we have another television show in active production. This is now the fourth. Uh, We've got Discovery, obviously, uh, which just started its second season, The Picard Show, which according to Alex Kurtzman uh, will either be coming at the end of this year or early next, Lower Decks, the animated TV show, and now a Section 31 story starring Michelle Yao. We don't have many details other than the fact that the show is uh, in development and the showrunners have been announced. Uh, It will be the writing duo of Erica Lippolt and Bo Young Kim, who wrote one of my personal favorite episodes from uh, season one of Discovery, uh, Into the Forest I Go. Um, So super exciting. Uh, The show will kind of continue to tell the story of Empress Georgiou, now of Section 31. 
one, but it seems like there's been a little bit of a controversial fan reaction uh, to it. Ali, I mean, what do you think about this show? Section 31, Emperor Giorgio... Does this work for you? Well, I know that there's been obviously a lot of debate around Section 31. I'm actually completely on board with it. I love Michelle Yeoh, and I think the darker side of Starfleet is something that is really interesting that we could explore. I think Discovery Season 1 definitely highlighted a little bit of that darkness with the Klingon War, but honestly, we see Starfleet as kind of an entity that you know, follows principles, is guided by morality in pursuit of diversity, inclusiveness, etc. And it's something we all should aspire to, but that doesn't mean that a Section 31 show won't have any of that. I feel like a lot of people are just assuming that, oh, it's just going to be all evil because that's what Giorgio is and that's what she's only capable of. But I'm positive, or pretty positive, that it's probably going to echo just how important those Starfleet ideals are. I don't know. What do you think? I think you're 100% right about that. I think we we got to wait and see, right? You know, these are two writers who who know Star Trek very well and who I don't think would, you know, run a show that was counter to the the ideals that we've seen. I'll leave it there for now because I will probably have more to say about this particular topic later when we get into uh, speculation. So, our second story is the fabulous news that is long overdue uh, that the four short tracks that were released in North America uh, over the course of the fall to today uh, finally were made available uh, for the rest of the world on Netflix. For those uh, Discovery viewers uh, who were watching the show through Netflix, uh, the short tracks were not available. Uh, Now they are, which, you know, may be four months late from uh, what viewers in North America saw, but uh, is... I'm glad they're up and available. Uh, Ali, don't you think it's this is about time? Yeah, absolutely. I felt so bad for all of my friends that weren't in the US and Canada that weren't able to watch it. I can't, I seriously can't imagine how hard it would have been to avoid spoilers. I mean, I'm sure they must have gotten a lot of them, but I, what I've heard from social media, now that they've had the chance to watch it, they have been enjoying them. So that's a good thing. Yeah, especially since it seems like the third short trek, The Brightest Star, will have an implication for uh, season two of Discovery. In the first episode of the season, Brother Saru did reference the fact that he had a sister. Um, and we've seen uh, in the trailers a couple of shots that seem to indicate that that the Kelpians will reappear. So I think it, that's probably really important background for whatever that episode's going to be. And so it's great that now the whole audience has access to that rather than just a piece of it. Um, and hopefully when these new two new short treks come out after the finale of season two um, those will also be made available on Netflix in a timely manner and won't have to wait until the premiere of Discovery season three which could be you know potentially a year a little over a year away Mm-hmm. That's a long time to wait. <laughs> That's a long time to wait, and hopefully they won't be in that. I remember what it was, you know, I, I grew up in England, so I, I know full well what it's like to be behind the, the curve uh, when it comes to watching new Star Trek. Back when Voyager and Deep Space Nine were on, there was a several-month lag between broadcast in, in the U.S. And, and being on in the U.K., and, and even though um, the Internet was in its early days, it still uh, it was tough to avoid spoilers even back then. Um, and now, of course, you know, if you don't catch something the moment it goes up uh you are you are liable uh to run into trouble on the internet <laughs> as yes we know. yeah i watched the the season premiere of, of uh yesterday and i watched it an hour after it premiered just because i had to wait for my friends to get done with work and i got a spoiler on twitter oh my goodness Darn. that's okay though it wasn't too bad that's the world we live in at the moment all right so Obviously, we had the season two premiere last night, and they had a premiere event in New York in which a number of the cast and major members of the crew um, were at a red carpet event, lots of press, uh, including the major fan outlets, trekcore.com, trekmovie.com. And there were some new tidbits of information that came in that have dribbled in today. I'm sure we'll see more over the weekend, and, and if 
and we'll talk about those on next week's show. But one of the major pieces of news coming out of the red carpet event last night is an indication that plans are already underway for Star Trek Discovery Season 3. Yes, that's right. There has only been one episode broadcast of the season so far, but according to co-executive producers Alex Kurtzman and Heather Caden, uh, they have already put some thought into what uh, Season 3 will look like. When uh, TrekCore.com's interviewer was asking about the Georgiou show, co-executive producer Heather Caden indicated that that there were plans for Giorgio to appear in Star Trek Discovery Season 3. And no, it was not a misspeak, as you'll hear from the following clip. So we, you should never feel like it's, meanwhile, in a whole other show, is right. Giorgio. I mean, it really feels of a piece. Is there any kind of timeline for when we might see these? Uh, not officially, but she'll be in Discovery Season 3. Did you say Giorgio was in Season 3? Did I just tell you say that? Season 2. And Season 3. And season three. Oh. Yes. Heather very clearly says that the plan is for Giorgio to appear in Star Trek Discovery Season 3. So it sounds like the co-executive producers are feeling pretty confident about a Season 3 for Discovery. How do you feel about that, Allie? That is super exciting. When I first was reading the article, I was actually thinking what you had said, that it was like, oh, I accidentally said Season 3, but it's not. And then when you go back and listen, it, I mean, everyone's like, oh, what? And that's just what I was like, oh, I mean, does season two, it, what was it, like two episodes, three episodes into season one where they had renewed for season two? Yeah, I think the renewal last season came by episode five or six. It was it, given it was a 15 episode season. It, it was really early in the season. Yeah, so we might be hearing that soon. I think there's a lot of Dominion propaganda out there about how, you know, Discovery is not successful, that Netflix you know, basically floated the show for two seasons, but that it's in real trouble um, and that it's definitely not going to get a season three. And I've never thought that was right. I've always thought that was news that was being pushed by fans who had an agenda against the show. And this seems to indicate that. I mean, put aside the fact that there are three other active TV shows in production. If Discovery had not been successful, we would not have any more Star Trek on the way. But this kind of, I think, puts to bed, well, um, pending an official uh, uh, word of the renewal of of Discovery for season three, I think this uh, this casts serious doubt on the idea that Discovery itself is in trouble. Not least because, according to all of the metrics of of, of companies who look at social media, um, Star Trek Discovery is a show that gets a lot of discussion online. Obviously, we don't know exactly what the ratings are because it's a streaming show and they don't release that kind of information. But this is a very confident step forward uh, for the Star Trek franchise. And if they're already kind of thinking about what Star Trek Discovery Season 3 will look like, I think that indicates that we are in a really good place. Oh, absolutely. I especially think that it just provides so much more time for storytelling. I know that that's one thing that happened in Enterprise that people were like, well, you know, it only got four seasons and they didn't get a chance to finish it off. So it'd be nice if we saw many seasons of Discovery to really tell the story well. And it seems like uh, they are making a real attempt not to uh, not to oversaturate the market. There was another story today about one of the corporate heads for CBS All Access uh, was talking about the Star Trek franchise and indicated that you know the Giorgio show, even though it's been announced as being in active development, may take some time to come to the screens. And even said you know it could be the case that that show does not premiere until after Star Trek Discovery has ended. So uh, I think they are trying to be very careful about making making sure that they are spacing out these shows, that they are giving us a different kind of perspective through each one, and also that they're not overloading the audience with new content. Though it, from from this particular Star Trek fan's heart, there's never too much, and they could give me all <laughs> Star Trek all of the time, and I would be perfectly happy. So I talked last week about uh, my theory that After Trek would not be returning um, for season two. Season one After Trek host Matt Myra had said that he was not under contract uh, for uh, another season of After Trek and that he did not think the show was going ahead. Um, And I said, therefore, I thought that probably meant that After Trek was done. Um, And it turned out that I was half right. 
According to a news story this week that was first reported on TrekMovie.com, uh, After Trek, while it will not be returning on CBS All Access, uh, will be launching a weekly Facebook live stream event um, that will include interviews with the cast, with the creators, with the crew um, and the showrunners and the writers that will broadcast each week. Very few details about this, no information about who will be hosting. We did see something a little bit like what I think they're going to do. Uh, several months ago, uh, Neville Page and Glenn Hetrick, the sort of makeup and uh, creature design aficionados for Star Trek Discovery, did a Facebook live stream in which they talked about some of the makeup. That's where we saw uh, the concept drawing for Saru that had that was an early concept drawing of Saru um, that had multiple eyes, um, which was sort of shot on a small kind of uh, studio space um, uh, and just broadcast over Facebook. And I think that might be what we see rather than something slicker and more produced like the After Trek that we got for season one of Discovery. Um, so I'm excited that we'll continue to hear from the cast and crew of Star Trek Discovery. I think actually Matt Myra uh, really grew on me over the course of the season. I think he found his confidence for those interviews by the end. Ali, what did you think about Weekly Trek last season and this news that we're going to be getting some kind of uh, Facebook live streams to replace it? I'm very much along the same lines as you are. I am keeping my mind open because obviously we haven't seen any of the Facebook live events as of yet. I mean, they did the live stream of the red carpet yesterday, but I thought After Trek was really fun. But... You know, I'll I'll keep my mind open, and regardless, I love that we're getting something along the lines of an after show where we still can have these fun conversations and learn a little bit more and dig a little bit deeper, because that's always the fun part, to get to hear the ideas and hear the process, and sometimes just hearing about that stuff like spaceship design or the stuff with, with Saru, I just makes me feel bad that I'm not as creative as I am. <laughs> Uh, but I, I'm going to keep my options open. I, I do think After Trek was fun, but we'll have to see on the Facebook Live and the direction that they take it in. Yeah, it's those little behind-the-scenes details that I really enjoyed out of that format. And I also, one of the reasons I tuned in every week was for the sort of extended preview for uh, the episode to come the next week. I guess I, yeah, I agree with you. I don't necessarily need all of the bells and whistles that, you know, the fully produced version of the show had, but I would still like the opportunity to hear from, you know, the cast member who featured most in that episode or one of the writers about um, how the show went and what their experience was because it, it did give us some really kind of fun insights behind the scenes that normally you wouldn't get until you know long after the show was over it was it was nice to get that week by week and sort of chart the 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 production of the show as it went over season one so i i hope that piece of it will stay when in doubt something is better than nothing right when in doubt something is better than nothing that is an absolutely the right philosophy to have okay our last story for the week is an announcement of a new novel uh which actually ties into the premiere of Star Trek Discovery Season 2. Coming from Gallery Books and Simon & Schuster, um, the latest Star Trek Discovery novel uh, will be entitled The Enterprise War, written by John Jackson Miller, who became a regular Star Trek author three or four years ago and has now penned... He had one uh, trilogy and a couple of one-off novels. I've been a big fan of his writing. Uh, I thought the Prey trilogy that he wrote, which really focused on the Klingon, um, was very well done. And now he is diving into the story of uh, Captain Pike and the USS Enterprise during the Klingon War. Um, so as we saw in Brother, Pike indicated that the Enterprise sat out the Klingon War, that it did not participate in the war and that they were still out on their five-year mission. And this novel seems to, uh, from what we know about it, will tell us the story to fill in the details of what happened to the Enterprise during the war. It seems like from the blurb that was provided uh, that there were actually other reasons why the Enterprise was not able to return to Earth, that maybe they were something to do with them being cut off and the crew being separated um, and having to come back together and find their way back to the Federation uh, to 
to join the war effort, which I think sounds like a super interesting premise for a book. I am a huge fan of Captain Pike after last night's uh, season premiere, and so I'm looking forward to um, doing what most books do and sort of climbing inside his head. Ali, are you a book reader? Do you think this is one that you'll pick up? I am a book reader, but I will admit that I have a long way to go to catch up on all of my Trek reading, so I'll have to listen to Reading Trek and follow along. But something like this, this book has me super excited. I I mean, I have a bunch of Star Trek novels that I've been meaning to get through, but this one is definitely going to be on the top of my list when it does come out. I believe uh, July is what the date was. That's right, July 30th. Okay, and then obviously when we found out that we didn't see the Enterprise in the war itself, it left us with questions. So now we're going to hopefully get those questions answered. And I, I love Captain Pike. And like like you said, I think Anson Mount did a fantastic job yesterday in the premiere. And I'm so, so eager to learn more about his character. And uh, also I'm hoping we're going to get to hear more about number one because she's my favorite. <laughs> Uh, and well, I mean, we'll get to hear about younger Spock as well. So there's a lot of little tidbits there that are going to be some some great information, some some great brushing up, and then getting to watch season two will be done by then. But then hopefully we'll be on our way to season three. Yeah, something that will be really interesting. I'm a book fan. I have been reading Star Trek books since I was a wee lad. The first book that I read was the novelization for All Good Things. So that, uh, and that was when it was a new release. So that shows you how far back it was uh, that I started reading Star Trek novels. Um, what be really interesting, and we don't know this yet because we didn't really see number one in Brother, um, is that the books have sort of given uh, number one a backstory, have given her a name a race um, and I'd be really curious to see if Discovery decides to adopt any of the details that the book continuity has had for number one I yeah. somehow doubt it um, just because that doesn't tend to be how uh, modern media works but I'm curious to see how that turns out I think it would be interesting if they if they did uh, go in the same direction as the books but totally understand why they wouldn't and think there are lots of interesting things that you could do uh, with the character's backstory the books have really done a very good job over the last 15 years of sort of developing a shared continuity that sort of tells stories beyond the end of the series uh, each of the respective series and so uh, one of the open questions with this and also with the Picard show is uh, whether we will be seeing any of that book continuity come to life I somehow doubt it but I'm curious to see when number one shows up in Discovery and then how it's handled uh, in this novel trying to reconcile the two if at all mm -hmm. we'll have to find out we most certainly will all right that is it for the news this week and uh, now it's time for us to have have a little bit of fun. You make some very good points, Captain. But it's still all speculation and theory. So we, as I did last week, wanted to speculate wildly um, about something coming in the future of Star Trek. Couldn't be anything. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it and also uh we're not worried if we end up getting it right or not so ali it's time to travel the mycelial network um and tell us something you think or hope we have to look forward to in star trek i promise you there will be no consequences if it doesn't come true but you may be trapped in an alternate dimension forever so let's hear your theory for this week <laughs> okay here's my theory I suspect that we are going to see another Star Trek movie, but it's not going to be as soon as we think it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So where where this theory comes from is obviously with all the Star Trek news and the new shows being announced, I honestly think that having another movie right now might not be the greatest idea mm -hmm. because part of the excitement of the Kelvin films is that there wasn't any Star Trek in syndication at the time. And while when they announced the proposed Star Trek four with the time travel story with Kirk and his dad, and I, I mean, I love the Kelvin films, and I think that that would have been super interesting, but I also think it would be a great opportunity to also make a Kelvin movie with some of the other supporting characters. Mm -hmm. And some people think that can happen. Some people think they can't do it without Chris Pine. And while I love him as Captain Kirk, I'd love to see some fleshing out of the other characters. I'd also 
love to see Jayla come back. I love her. I want to learn more about her story. And then obviously dig into some of these other characters like Sulu and Bones and Scotty and Uhura. But obviously, if we were to replace Anton Yelchin, that would be really difficult to do. But maybe we'll see a Discovery movie. I don't know. It's already a very cinematic production. I think we're going to see another Star Trek movie. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I think we're going to see it. That's my speculation. As Jim said last week, if you were a betting woman and you had to bet all of your life savings on either there being another Star Trek movie or there not being another Star Trek movie, there being another Star Trek movie is the safe bet. Which of the Kelvin supporting characters do you think you'd most like to see a, a, a movie about? Uh, I would love to see like a Scotty and Bones and Spock would be fun. And I think also, I know that a lot of people have said they'd just love to see like the duo with Spock and mm -hmm. Bones because in in Beyond they had such, you know, they had a connection moment and they had humor and it was great. So I think they can do it without Chris Pine. I love Chris Pine. I'm not going to say that I don't. And I, I love the Kelvin movies, but I, I'll stick with uh, Spock and Bones. Dr. McCoy, A Star Trek Story. I think that's my choice. Well, fingers crossed. You know, I think we will learn something eventually. And actually, um, one of the other pieces of news out of the red carpet event yesterday was trekmovie.com was asking Alex Kurtzman about whether with the rumors that, uh, that Paramount and CBS are back in uh, merger renegotiations, that the whole Star Trek franchise may end up getting pulled back under one roof, which it's not been since the two companies um, were separated in 2006. And that's why we have a separate movie series uh, from the television shows and, and Kurtzman uh, didn't really go there but also said that Discovery is so cinematic which it is I mean the aspect ratio that season 2 is filmed in is a cinematic aspect ratio the effects are incredible I mean we are effectively getting a Star Trek movie on the small screen every week and with TVs now being as big as they are uh, it is almost as good as being in the cinema but we get 14 hours rather than just 2 I like that theory that's a great one so mine for this week uh, is coming back to the Giorgio TV show. And I said I didn't think that the uh, showrunners would be in the business of uh, giving us a show that went against Star Trek's sort of uh, utopian ideals. Um, and I think that will be just as true uh, with the Giorgio show. I think we are in for a redemptive arc for Michelle Yao's character um, that we will really see over the course of the show how this sort of hardened, bitter product of the Terran universe um, will become much more like the Philippa Giorgio of the prime timeline that we saw in the first two episodes of Discovery. And it will be sort of a show about how the power of the Federation and of Starfleet's ideals can overcome even the most ingrained of conditioning towards being uh, an evil emperor of, of the Terran Empire. Um, and then it, you know, it probably will not start off that way. And there will, because they will be telling one story Story over a more prolonged period of time that that it will be one in which there may be some dark moments um, but that ultimately the show will bend towards the light and as we saw in Star Trek Discovery season one one of the one of the most constant themes of Star Trek has been around uh, right winning in the end um, and I think that may be what we're in for with the Giorgio show um, and I think it could be really interesting and I think it could be really powerful and especially with these writers behind it I mean we know nothing about the show right now and that's why this is a hundred speculation but again if you ask me to put all of my life savings on figuring out what the Giorgio show is going to be I would say it would be a redemptive story what do you think about that Allie? I love that I think that it would be super appropriate and obviously like I was saying earlier when we were first talking about the show itself it's the the Federation embodies all these ideals of which we aspire to be like and it would be so great to see someone who really or we think is is the darkest of the dark, right? She was the the emperor of the Terran Empire and see her really start to change and for the better. And it might take her a while to do that and she's going to go have to go through a lot, but that would be a, one heck of a story, I'll tell you that. Well, fingers crossed we uh we will find out sooner rather than later. I'm super excited for it. I mean, who would have thought 
three years ago that now talking there would be four shows in active production we truly are as i will remind everyone every week in a new golden age for star trek all right that is all the time we've got for this episode of the weekly trek thank you so much to my guest ali martinez for joining me today ali how can people contact you if they want to continue the conversation I can be found primarily on Twitter. My handle is at T Trekkie. I go by that same handle on Instagram. You can also check out my website. And the web address is ttrekkie.wordpress.com. And I am a big fan of uh, your Twitter account. I love the posts uh, and the love of Star Trek and especially Tal Talk Tuesdays. Oh, thank you. I have a lot of fun with them. I never would have thought that anyone would enjoy them, but here we are. <laughs> If you enjoy the show, please consider leaving us a five-star review on your podcast player of choice, and please check out some of the other great shows on the Tricorder Transmissions. If you like our shows, please consider becoming a Patreon of Tricorder, which you can do at patreon.com slash the Tricorder Transmissions. And lastly, a personal plug for my favorite news site where I'm lucky enough to be a contributor, trekcore.com. If this show gets anywhere close to their high standards for news reporting and analysis, I'd say we've been doing a good job. Well, thank you again, Ali. Thank you to all my listeners. And until next week, live long and prosper.